It's the night before Thanksgiving or Christmas, and you've spent the whole day prepping for the big holiday. And if no one in your family does anything for that night before the holiday, sometimes you're left figuring out what to do. One of my holiday traditions is making a bolognese sauce the night before a holiday. My family always loves it, they always ask for it, and I figured there's so much turkey going around this time of year, especially ground turkey, that it just makes sense to swap out the beef, add ground turkey, and the result is actually equally as delicious. It's still luscious, and rich and delicious, but it's a bit lighter and smoother, and there's a really pleasant flavor to it that I really love, and I think you're gonna love it too. The pans you see me use today are provided by our sponsor today, Made In, but more on them later. For now, let's just jump right into it. Now I've got my turkey stock on the stove and it's been going on all night. Now I've showed you how to make this, it's in my holiday plan of attack, but if you haven't watched that video, here's a quick recap. So I went to my local supermarket and this time of year they usually have turkey scraps, like a turkey carcass that they were selling for like $2 and some big turkey legs. So I just wanna get those in a sheet tray, pat dry, coat in oil and salt, and then we're gonna roast them at a 450 degree oven until they get some nice color. Get those turkeys into a big stock pot, degrease the pan and then deglaze the pan and then add that to the pot. I also have some frozen chicken scraps from throughout the year, which I'm just gonna add in as well. We wanna fill it all up with water in a big stock pot and we wanna bring it up to a boil, then drop it down to a simmer. And as some of the scum rises to the top, you just wanna skim it off. Once the scum is sort of settled down, then we can start to add some of the vegetables. Again, I have some frozen vegetables, scraps, and I'm gonna throw in some fresh carrots and celery as well. And we just wanna keep this going on a very low simmer for about 24 hours. So I just let it go overnight, and, and the next day, it's ready to go, and we can just set that off to the side and use that for our bolognese. Now for the sauce, we're gonna need a couple carrots washed, few celery stalks, an onion, some garlic, and about a half pound of pancetta. Now we're gonna blend up all of these ingredients, but before we blend them up, I wanna chop them into a smaller dice. Break them down into smaller pieces and then add to the food processor one vegetable at a time. And you may ask yourself why chop before blending? It's just gonna do a better job of dicing them finely the way we want when they're smaller dice like this than it would be when they're whole. For the garlic, I like to give it just a really good smash to break it down, then peel the skins, and then we can just keep them like that. Then we're gonna process one vegetable at a time. And a food processor is a lot better than a blender here because you can really kind of pulse and dial in proper texture that you're looking for. And what we're trying to do is create the same texture and coarseness of the turkey when the sauce is finished. So we want all of the vegetables and the ground turkey to sort of mimic each other's look and texture so that it all blends into each other when the sauce is complete. This is kind of exactly the texture that I'm looking for, knowing it's gonna shrink a little bit as it cooks and releases moisture. So we're just gonna get that into a bowl and we're just gonna go through the rest of the vegetables, processing them exactly the same way. I'm a little bit more careful with the onions. I pulse them a little bit more. If you let the blade go too much, you might break the onions down too much then become too watery. I still wanna maintain a little bit of that texture. And then lastly, mince the pancetta. Now here's the ground turkey, and the important thing is to avoid ground turkey breast. If it says ground turkey breast, it's only breast. If it says ground turkey, it's got all the fat of the turkey, which is what you want for this. We're going with two pounds of it, and then we're going to brown this in a non-stick pan separate from everything else, so we can make sure that every morsel of this ground turkey is browned to perfection. I don't know if you noticed or not, but today I'm using some new gear thanks to our sponsor today, Made In. Made In produces professional quality cookware for those who love to cook. They source the finest materials and partner with renowned craftsmen to make premium kitchen tools available directly to you without markup. Their cookware distributes heat evenly and can easily go from the stovetop to the oven, and their products are made to last 
and they offer a lifetime guarantee. I just got set up with their 3.5 quart saute pan, which has these really tall walls, which I love and works well for the sauce we're making today. And it also has this great offset handle, which is a minor detail, but one that I really appreciate in my pan. I also got their 12 inch nonstick fry pan in their Harbor Blue, also with that offset handle, a four quart sauce pan and a 12 quart stock pan, which is perfect for making large batches of Brodo, which we like to have on hand for this show. And with the holidays around the corner, this all makes for great gifts, which is why I'm super happy that Maiden is offering my viewers 15% off their first order with the link down in the description. The code not another cooking show will be automatically applied when you click the link. So head on down there, place your first order today, and thanks Maiden for sponsoring this video. So to start cooking the vegetables, I have some of this turkey fat that I reserved earlier from roasting the turkey. I'm gonna add a hefty tablespoon of that to the pan and then add the processed carrots, onions, and celery. We're gonna hit them with some salt. Now what's gonna happen is all of the moisture from those vegetables is about to release into the pan. No color will be developed in the first part of this cooking. And what you're gonna have to do is evaporate all of that water before you start to develop any flavor. So we're just gonna let this cook on high heat, allowing that moisture to evaporate. And once we see that it's basically all gone, then we can add that minced pancetta. And I forgot to add the garlic at this point, but this is the point with the pancetta that I would add the garlic. Then we want to just mix that all together and start developing that fond on the bottom of the pan. I'm also going to slide that over to the side while we get a non-stick pan onto the main burner with a little bit more turkey fat. And that's the pan that we're going to brown the turkey in. A meat like ground turkey is really kind of wet and that usually sticks to a stainless steel pan. And so using a non-stick is gonna allow us to develop the color that we need to develop the flavor that we want in this ground turkey. And we wanna break it up and like the vegetables, this is going to release a lot of moisture into the pan that we also have to evaporate out before this turkey even begins to start browning. So we wanna go high heat and with a flat bottomed wooden spoon, just go and break the turkey up. Make sure you get some seasoning on there with some salt. And we really wanna get this ground turkey down to the texture and coarseness that the vegetables are. And just like the vegetables, once you deem that moisture has evaporated, then we can get a little bit more fat in and that's when we can start to actually fry the meat and get it that golden brown color that's gonna add a lot of depth of flavor to the meat. You don't wanna worry about developing fond in the non-stick pan. Fond that we're gonna be developing is happening in the vegetable pan. So you just wanna take your time, let the turkey brown really nicely and fry in that turkey fat. And once it's nicely browned, we're gonna add that turkey directly to the vegetables and then begin developing the fond on the bottom of the pan. Now I'm gonna develop that fond sort of in two stages. The first stage is right now where the vegetables are sort of clinging to the pan and creating deep flavor. The next part of it is going to be adding a cup of tomato paste. This is also the time I realized I forgot the garlic, so I added it now. But what you wanna do is work that tomato paste into the mixture. It's gonna create sort of a paste out of everything and start to cling to the bottom of the pan and create a lot of depth of flavor and fond on the pan. And right before the fond gets too dark, that's when you wanna deglaze with some good red wine. So I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time and use the wooden utensil to scrape it up. And if at any point I need a little bit more wine to pick up any of that fond, I'm gonna just add a touch more until the bottom of the pan is clean. Then I'm gonna take some of that turkey broth that we've been cooking all night. And I'm gonna strain in a few ladles of that into the bolognese sauce until the pan fills up. Then we're gonna add in about a cup of whole milk, stir that in, and then a bundle of sage, thyme, and rosemary, some nice Thanksgiving flavors. And we're just gonna tie that up and let that steep into the sauce. And we're going to simmer that over two to three hours, stirring occasionally, making sure nothing sticks to the bottom of the pan. And then after about two and a half, three hours, it should be nice and thick. We can remove the herbs. And I like to finish it with a little bit of cream, maybe like a half cup of heavy cream, and then a few tablespoons of butter. Melt that in, and then the sauce is ready. We can set that over to the side, 
And the night before, I actually made some fresh pasta and I have a little bit left over. So I'm gonna roll out some pasta dough. We've covered how to make this beautiful pasta recipe and I'll leave a link down in the description. But we never went over how to cut them by hand in case you don't have the right attachment to your pasta cutter. Once the sheets are rolled out, I'm gonna cut them down to manageable sizes and then I'm gonna let them dry out slightly on the board so that I don't ever become too sticky when I'm cutting it. And then you wanna take each end and make two folds towards the center of the pasta dough. And then you can take your knife and measure the size of the tagliatelle strands that you want and then just go through and make those cuts. And you're left with these beautiful strands of pasta that are ready to be tossed into the pasta water. Then we can get a pot of salted water boiling and we can add the tagliatelle, which is gonna take about two to three minutes to cook since it's fresh. Now, as you can see, this is the texture and consistency of a good bolognese in my opinion. So I'm gonna take a few ladles, add it to the pan, after about three minutes, the pasta should be floating and I'm gonna add that to the bolognese sauce on medium heat, start to marry the pasta with the sauce. And then after a minute or two, kill the heat and then begin to work in the Parmigiano-Reggiano, folding it into the pasta and to the sauce. Now the pasta should be cooked. The sauce should be coating the pasta. It's time to plate it. Take some tongs and twirl it like a big fork. Carefully get it plated onto the plate and then top with some more bolognese sauce and a final sprinkle of some Parmigiano Reggiano. I mean, is there really anything to say? You'd like the recipe? It's gonna be in my holiday plan of attack link down in the description for the ebook and the all access pass to all the digital content. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. For more Thanksgiving recipes, I got four more on the screen, like this really easy beginner upside down turkey. It's perfect for any skill level and it's pretty much gonna guarantee as good of a whole turkey as possible. Thanks for watching and happy Thanksgiving.